So in Psalm 2 it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And so at this time when we are living on the earth right now, that's what we are experiencing. The heathen are raging and the people are imagining a vain thing. Everything that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And verse 2 says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And so it really is like the culmination of evil that is trying to come together in this time before Christ returns. Verse 3 says, these kings are saying, let us break their bands asunder. Let's cast away their cords from us. Everything that wants to loosen itself from God, where man wants to exalt himself more and more and more, where man wants to be on the throne. But verse 4 says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh and he shall put them in derision and really we ask ourselves who can who can stand up against our God who can raise himself higher than our God who and of course really that was the enemy's intention from the very goal from the very word go, he tried to exalt himself against God. And he said, I will exalt my throne above and higher than the throne of God. And that's the very reason why he was placed and put out of heaven. But the greatest of it all is verse 4. He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. He shall have them in derision. Our God shall laugh at the plans of the enemy. Five says then he shall speak to them in his wrath and vex them sore in displeasure don't think that God is just quietly watching what's happening on the earth don't ever think this then he shall speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Verse 6 Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Friends, the king of kings, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, the head of the church, He will return to the earth and he will set himself on his holy hill in Zion and he will rule the earth. That day will come. That day will come. And 
Verse 8 says, Ask of me, and I shall give you the heathen for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thine possession. And so the day will come that Christ will reign and rule on the earth and we will rule and reign with him to the utmost parts of the earth. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And friends, Christ is coming back. But next time when we see him, He's not coming back as a little baby. No, he's coming back on a white horse. Christ is returning. He's going to come back and he's come back as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's going to come back as the victorious Christ, the head, the bridegroom, the head of the church. He's going to come back. In verse 10, God gives these kings some instruction. He says, Be wise now, therefore, O kings, and be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. the Lord with fear it is your and my challenge in this time on the earth that we will serve God with fear that we will ask the Lord for his help to be obedient to the word to serve God with fear in our hearts the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the Lord in that sense that Oh God, help me. I, I want to do what pleases you. Help me, Lord. I, I want to be obedient to everything written in your scriptures. I want to serve not some God in my imagination. I want to serve the God of the scriptures. And friends, in this time in which we are living, the enemy is trying to, you know, let people think up some God, some God that they think God is like this or God is like that. Or I think God is like this or I think God is like that. No, friends. What is God asking of us? He's asking of us that we will serve the God of the scriptures. Not my idea of God know the God of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation not one verse somewhere you know brought completely out of its context know the God of the scriptures serve the Lord with fear but then also rejoice with trembling and when we serve God with fear, with a healthy fear of the Lord, we will rejoice with trembling. We will be worshipers. We will be worshipers. And Psalm 2 ends verse 12. And it says, kiss the sun lest he be angry. Meaning, let's honor Christ. Let's honor Christ. Let's exalt him. 
above everything else. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry. The enemy wants to bring some form of Christ, some idea, some imagination of Christ, that he's like a little baby that's just always happy, a little baby that doesn't require anything from us, requires no obedience from us. The enemy wants the church to believe that Christ cannot get angry in our generation. But verse 12 says, kiss, honor, exalt the Son. Lift Him up. Let Him have the preeminence of everything, lest He be angry and you perish from the way. When His wrath is kindled but a little. Friends, one moment of the wrath of God, also in New Testament times, also in this time that we are living under grace, we don't want to stir up the wrath of God in our time. Psalm 2 ends in such a beautiful way. Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. Friends, if you're in my heart, continually say, Lord, help me to be obedient to your scriptures. Help me to do what you desire from me. We are and we will be blessed. And you are blessed if you put your trust in Him. Even put your trust in Him to be obedient. Even put our trust in Him to help us to do what He wants us to do. Blessed are all they, all they that put their trust. your trust in Him. You are not cursed when He is your everything. You are blessed when 
you put your trust in him forever you are blessed would you sing with me in you alone in you alone I put my trust forever in you alone Jesus you alone I put my trust forever last time friends sing it with me in you alone Jesus in you alone Jesus I put my trust forever You alone, Jesus. In you alone, I put my trust forever. And so you are blessed as a worshiper. forever